Welcome back guys. In this video, we're gonna talk about dependent motion. From its name, what is a dependent motion? Dependent motion means a particle B has a motion that depends on particle A. What does this mean? This means that the position of B depends upon the position of A and the velocity of B depends upon the velocity of A and the same goes to acceleration. Where can I can face such conditions? Such conditions, guys, are usually faced in police. So if I take this example, from my experience, I can say that if this particle A is moving with a velocity VA, then B will be lifted upward. In this example, I can also, from my experience, say that if A is moving upward, then B will be moved downward with the same velocity. So let's find out, guys, in this dependent motion case, if my findings will agree with my experience. In fact, guys, the first step ever in dependent motion is to set a datum where the position is equal to zero as well as an origin. So I'm going to set this as my datum here. And this O here as my origin. And since, in fact, this is a rectilinear motion, A goes in a rectilinear motion as well as B, I can say that this is SA from the origin to this point A, because I'm considering MA, the mass A, as a particle. And I can also consider that this is SP from O to B. This is a dependent motion, which means I should relate SA to SB. How? In fact, guys, as long as this is an elastic rope, which means it has a constant and fixed length, so this cord or rope has a fixed length, then I can say that the length of this rope is constant, so the length of this rope is constant, and I'm going to call it big LT. What is the length of this rope in terms of SA and SB? It is, in fact, this CD here plus SA going from origin, which is the same origin, guys. I cannot say that this O is the origin for A, and then, for example, this O here is the origin of B. They must have the same origin lying into this datum here. So this datum will indicate the zero position, all right? So CD plus SA plus SB should be equal to the total length of the slope LT. Now, what does this mean? This means, guys, that SA plus SB will be equal to LT minus CD, which is constant. CD is constant, and the total length of the slope is always constant. From this equation here, guys, I can do the derivative in order to find the velocity. And this will give me that VA, because V is the time derivative of position. It is the SA over dt. So VA plus VB will be equal to zero. And this will also give me VA is equal to minus VB. And this is what I said first using only my experience. So VA in magnitude will be equal to VB, and they are going to move in the opposite direction. And you can also as well do the derivative with respect to time to find the acceleration, and you're going to find that AA is equal to minus AB. So guys, this is the dependent motion. I know 
suppose that this is a very simple example and I can face another more complicated example like these examples that we're going to solve in the uh, uh, problem solving session. However, guys, they will all start from the first step, which is to indicate a datum. So this is my data to indicate an origin, to set my position, which is, for example, this is SA, this is SB, and then to always find what is the constant line, all right? So where is my constant line? So I know, for example, that this is one rope, and this means it has a constant line, and then from this, from the equation of this constant line, I can relate SA and SP. So guys, we're going to solve more complicated examples in dependent motion, so don't worry. And this will be, of course, in the session of Thursday, in the solving session, uh, in the solving problem session. And then you, you're going to see, guys, how easy is dependent motion and how from this constant length equation, I can find all the kinematics variables like the velocity and accelerate.